Hey everyone, this is Mistress Mara, and today I want to talk about filming <laughs> domination versus domination sessions. I just started a video store where there are clips for sale, and I am doing different types of domination. They are about seven, five to seven to ten minutes long. They include fetishes, they include wardrobe, they include solo point of view shots, they include shots with other submissives. And boy is filming different from real life sessions. <laughs> I was going into it thinking, oh, well, it's it looks easy I guess I just do what I do in session but on camera right well <laughs> here are some of the differences I'm going to talk about what it was like filming by myself I had to get a camcorder or use my phone to capture footage and to do that I need it to be mobile so that I can position different angles and that was tricky because I either have to have a remote or I have to keep leaning in and out and in and out of frame <laughs> to get the shots that I want or to press record. Audio isn't always the best. I use a external microphone to talk right now because the distance between me and whatever it is that I'm recording from does not capture the sound ideally. And then, of course, doing sa fixing sound in post, it's, <laughs> it's not easy and it doesn't sound good. So that was a challenge. Another challenge was trying to be innovative in real time, but imagining what kind of submissive is in front of me at the moment. There are so many ways that a situation can go, but the good thing about real time sessions is that you are with another person and you react to that other person's reactions to whatever you begin or conceptualize when it's just yourself you just have you and your imagination <laughs> and the camera that is constantly rolling the good thing about footage though I do have to say is that you can cut out unwanted scenes you can edit things to the way that you want them and you can even shift clips if you think that something didn't happen that you would have wanted to and then had to film later after the fact. Oh, other positive things uh, that I found filming for and by myself is wardrobe. A lot of my clients ask me to be casual and I feel like I can wear whatever I have in my home and film in my home and still have different angles, still achieve what I want to portray in the clips. When I'm on set somewhere else, I have to adapt myself to that location, to those rooms, to the specific toys, to those environments. I know my home really well, but if I am shooting in a place that I have never been to before, I can ask for the lay of the land, I can go there beforehand and check the place out, but most of the time I don't have that kind of luxury where I can just go and scope out the place. Sure, if I was booking and renting a specific dungeon, or if I was going to the beach or something where it requires me to really figure out which area I want to direct in, you know, then yes, I would go there. But if it's in a place that has been shot at before or that 
I trust because other dominants have already filmed there, I'm just going to go into it and wing it as we film. So what are the pros and cons of shooting with other people? I'm going to start out with cons. <laughs> um, there were two submissives that I shot with the last week and I didn't know their tolerances. I've never played with them before. I've only heard feedback from the person who was holding the camera and that person hasn't really played with them before. They are only aware of how other dominants have played with them. So I was taking their word with a grain of salt. Um, one of them has Asperger's and the director was trying to gently tell me that so that if something happens during play and he, the sub or bottom overreacts to something to not take it personally and I was like you know in my per personal professional experience I have played with one autistic person and one person who also has Asperger's and both of them are mathematicians and they were both two very different people but I feel like I have experience working with so many different types of people that I can adapt and change myself to suit both of our needs. In this case my experience helped out. <laughs> I was able to play with both of these people individually and still facilitate how I would like to dominate, still give them pain, put breaks and make them feel good by rubbing out the pain, by delaying the next hit. And when we paused, whenever the director said, hold, I would always check in with them and say, hey, are you okay? Are you doing okay? Do you need water? Do you need anything? Again, A, because I've never played with them before, and B, because they're in compromising positions where their arms are in the air for a really long time, or I just spent 30 minutes caning someone's butt and it was red with all the line marks, and I was like, oh man, this is like one of the hardest scenes that I've done <laughs> in my entire career of four years, so dang, that person can really take it. And you know, we had smiles, we took selfies together afterwards, and it was a really good time. I feel like it's important to network with these people, even if I don't see th these subs or bottoms again, I want to make sure that our connection was good, that they had a good time, and both of them did tell me that afterwards, so I was really happy. And that is rewarding to me, because not only do I get good footage, it's a real experience, it's real reactions, it's real expressions, and that will come out in video. So those are the positives on filming with other people. The other thing that is different is having an extra person to kind of help direct you because if you're going to be starring in your own clips, it's really difficult to shoot while you're trying to get the exact shot that you want. I am a designer and illustrator by trade and so for me composition is really important but I have to kind of compromise that a little bit when I'm shooting by myself because I don't have the luxury of having that extra eye. Yes, I have a screen that shows me where I am in the frame but do I have a person holding that camera for me in that frame? Do I have the panning that I want? Do I have, you know, 360, whatever? I know the answer is no when I'm by myself. So there's a lot of different things that we can do alone or with people. I really encourage collaboration. I think it's really fun and 
It's unplanned, so for most of the time you have an idea of what kind of scene you want to do, but for the most part you're just hanging out, you play together, and then you both get really good footage. So those are some of my tips and tricks for filming any fetish or BDSM scenes. And like, comment, subscribe below, and I'll catch you next time. Be safe and have fun.